Hello everybody, I'm Mike Levin, and today I'm going to talk about abstraction layers. In my last video, I talked about the water pipe, which is about as opposite as you can get to the abstraction layer because you're talking about the literal construction of a hardware switch to control the flow of water, i.e. logic. So the other way we learn to draw this is the power comes in from a power source, goes down, goes into a surface, comes out of that surface, and continues. There's the switch here, and then we draw the circle like so. And then an indication of what direction things are flowing. Typically, when you're describing digital electronics, the next step from going from a physical example to a transistor would be to explain the AND gate. And when you invert the output, a similar gate called the NAND gate and from there you would probably talk about the OR gate and after the OR gate you would talk about the exclusive OR or the XOR gate because these are all the components that are necessary to talk about the next step, which is a half and then a full adder. It's one of the most simple calculators you can build out of these logic components. And then in a tremendous leap, adding in things like static memory and storage and a bus and millions of the switches, we talk about hardware. Now the problem with hardware is that so much hardware is different from other hardware. So you're a developer, you're standing here, and then you're looking at that hardware in great alarm. What? You mean I have to learn all that hardware? You have, and I have to specialize myself to that hardware so if the hardware changes, everything I learned is no longer applicable? Well, the great innovation that I alluded to in earlier videos was an abstraction layer that's built on top of the hardware, specifically the operating system, and even more specifically, the Unix operating system which was designed specifically to have this portability. There's lots of sub-stories in here, like the story of the C programming language, but I'll forego that for another time. So the operating system has a bunch of stuff to write text files, move files around, maybe do your compiling, but there's another layer on top that really is required for you to write and execute code. And there's a few things in there. It's kind of a grab bag, but I would certainly say your language that you're using and the uh, execution environment. So certain languages like Java come with their own execution environment, the Java runtime engine. Um, a, lot of a lot of languages do that. It's a virtual machine uh, strategy. It's another layer and is a whole other discussion in itself, which we will forego towards later. Because what you're trying to do eventually is build apps so that other people, other people than yourself, can actually interact with your apps. Of course that might be a mobile phone or a computer 
Uh, so there's a lot of other stuff that I didn't draw in here, but we are simplifying the abstraction layers. Each of these is an abstraction layer, and now the idea is that instead of for you having to pay attention and build applications directly on top of the hardware that would never last because they would break with every change in the hardware, you actually target this. This is why people call it a platform. These abstraction layers are platforms. And it's like, oh, great, I can program specifically for this. And you hear talk about frameworks all of the time. Frameworks are things that typically get inserted here. And they can be good. They speed up development time at usually the cost of execution time and dependency. So the final thing to know here is that every time you go up an extra layer, insert another layer of abstraction, there's a fairly good chance, and the whole reason is that you're doing it, is that your development time, your dev time, goes down. It takes you less time to develop, but the execution time, the time it takes for your code to execute, well, that goes up. So it's always a compromise. Do you want faster time making your apps, or do you want them to perform better? And resolving that relationship is oftentimes the subject of optimizations within these layers. Um, mobile apps run so well on the iPhone platform because of a very tight coupling from layer to layer because Apple controls things all the way down to the hardware layer. And there used to be an expression when you wanted really great performance, you as the developer were talking to the hardware. But that is being replaced by formalized application program interfaces, APIs, which are optimized and have intimate knowledge of the hardware that's in, underneath so that when you develop at this higher level, you're getting many of the similar advantages in performance as if you were developing directly for the hardware itself. So that is the full story of abstraction layers so that you can deal at a level where your development time is decreased and you can be more productive and have a longer uh, career with more transferable knowledge between systems over time. Thank you.